Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at and testing out the all new One X GPU. Now, if you're not familiar with this device, we're going to go over everything here, but this kind of goes hand in hand with the new One X Player X1, which is a brand new three in one handheld from One X Player. I did a first look video and basically we've got a massive screen here, detachable controllers. And I'd say one of the main draws here is this is the first handheld to market powered by the new Intel Core Ultra CPUs. My full review video will be coming up very soon, but I'm really interested in the new One X GPU. Basically what we've got here is an external GPU with USB 4 support, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and Oculink support. This will add a ton of power to your handheld, mini PC, your laptop, as long as the device has either USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or an Oculink port, you can actually connect this to said device. It'll also do up to 100 watt PD charging out, and we've also got an M.2 slot on the bottom, so we can actually add extra storage to whatever device we have connected to this. Personally, I think it's a really sleek device. Over here, we've got an Ethernet port, two Display ports, two HDMI ports, our Oculink port, USB 4, and our power in. Up front, we've got our power button, a boost button, an RGB button to change the RGB ring color. There's tons of different presets built in here. And we also have two full-size USB 3.2 ports, which are going to come in really handy for using your handheld in kind of dock mode. That way, we've got some extra ports here to plug different devices into. And like I mentioned, in the bottom of the unit, we can place an M.2 SSD. Now this has a PCIe 3.0 NVMe M.2 slot. I've installed a one terabyte drive here, and you know, it would be nice if it was PCIe 4.0, but you got to keep in mind when this is connected, it's going to be running over USB 4 or even USB 3.2, depending on what kind of connection you have. So going to 4.0 really wouldn't have made a difference from PCIe 3. And in order to get the One X GPU powered up, we do need to use this included 300 watt GAN charger. So this is going to send plenty of power to the GPU itself. Plus, we've got 100 watt out of that USB 4 port on the GPU, so we did need that extra power here. Okay, so some of you might be wondering what Oculink is. Now, on the channel, I've been doing quite a bit with Oculink. We've been seeing a lot of mini PCs and handhelds hitting the market with an Oculink port. Basically, it's a shrunk down external PCIe X8 4.0 slot, and uh, it'll run it up to 63 gigs. When you compare that to USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4, that's PCIe X8 3.0, and that'll only run up to 40 gigs. So obviously, Oculink can handle more bandwidth, and when you pair that up with an external GPU, it really does make a difference. Taking a look at the specs of the new One X GPU, Inside of this thing, we've got an AMD Radeon RX 7600 MXT with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, 32 compute units, 2048 stream processors, 64 raster units, and this will actually do up to 120 watts with the boost button on the front powered on. We've also got that PCIe 3.0 M.2 slot, so we can add a ton of storage here. Oculink port at 63 gigs, USB 4 at 40 gigs, two HDMI ports, two display ports. We also have Ethernet and those two USB 3.2 ports. Setting up the One X GPU is really easy. I've got my Oculink cable here, and I've noticed that we can actually go a bit longer with these Oculink cables than we can with Thunderbolt 4, so that's another plus. But this will work just either over Oculink or USB 4, Thunderbolt 4. Keep that in mind. You don't have to have an Oculink port in order for this to work. It's kind of a dual purpose eGPU. And I'll tell you, once this thing boots up, it's actually going to look for Oculink first. So if you have both of these plugged in, then you will get that Oculink connection. First thing we need to do here is add some power to the One X GPU. We're going to use that 300 watt GAN charger. I've got an HDMI cable here going to a 1080p monitor. Now I need to plug my Oculink cable into the One X GPU. And for this first test, we're just going Oculink without the USB-C or the USB 4 cable plugged in. I'll show you why in just a little bit, but the first device we're going to be testing with is the new One X Player X1. With this new 3-in-1 handheld, it does support USB 4, and we've also got an Oculink port up top. So we're just going to go ahead and plug in our Oculink. Now, before we boot up any device we have plugged in to the One X GPU, we want to make sure we power up the One X GPU. It does have the power button up front with a little LED indicator. Next, we'll go ahead and power up the One X Player X1. 
give it just a little time to boot up. And the way I've got this set up right now after installing the driver for that RX 7600 XT is we're gonna be using the external monitor exclusively. Now you could use both if you wanted to, but I've noticed much better performance just using a single monitor out of the eGPU. Okay, so I wanted to give you a look here. As you can see for that CPU, we've got the Intel Core 5 135H. That's the model of the X1 I have right now. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 7,400 and something megatransfers per second. We've still got access to the built-in Arc i GPU and the new NPU with these Core Ultra CPUs. But instead of using that built-in iGPU, we can now utilize this RX 7600 MXT, which is going to offer a giant jump in performance. Right now, you can see that we're not accessing that M.2 SSD that I have installed, and this is pretty awesome because we're not going to be using any of the bandwidth from Oculink, and that's why I didn't plug in USB 4 yet. Now, in order to get access to the USB ports and that M.2 slot on the One X GPU, you will need USB-C. It doesn't specifically have to be USB 4.0, but that's going to offer faster speeds. And again, if you have both of these plugged in at the same time when you're booting your unit up, it's always going to look for the Oculink first. And personally, I like this setup because we're not going to be sharing bandwidth with that Oculink port and the M.2 drive. You will need USB-C and that's going to use extra bandwidth. So we're still going to have access to 63 gigs with that Oculink port, enabling much faster GPU speeds. Like we saw up front, we've got that power button, our boost button, and the RGB button. Just cycling through these RGB modes here. There is a lot of them, so it could take you a little while to find what you like. But personally, I kind of like the uh, purple and bluish cyberpunk style. You can definitely find something that you like here, or you can disable it completely if you don't like RGB. But the next button we have here has a little lightning bolt on it. And I got confused when I first saw this. I actually thought that having this on would just enable USB 4, like Thunderbolt 4, but it's actually a GPU boost button. And since we're using a 1X player device, we do have access to the 1X player console or the performance tweaking suite that usually comes on these handhelds. Right now, there's no way to tune the GPU. It would be nice and maybe in the future they will add something. But with this here, we can take the TDP up on that new Core Ultra CPU to 28 watts, but I've noticed while I'm plugged in here, I'm actually getting a boost up to around 35. So I'm not sure if this is kind of docked mode or not, but it can definitely make a difference with some games. And speaking of games, let's get right into it. Here's Forza Horizon 5 1080p Ultra up in the top left hand corner. I've got Afterburner running. It'll show us everything we need to know. Give us that uh, FPS at the very top. And I don't have any kind of resolution scale on at all. You can see that I'm getting a pretty decent boost over 28 watts on that CPU. Very last reading there is CPU package power. I've also got the performance and E-Core clocks on screen right now, just so you can see what this thing's doing. And we're seeing some absolutely amazing performance out of this game. We're over 100 FPS right now. And uh, when I get to my full review video of the X1, we will be testing at 1440p with this eGPU. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to run it with a little bit of FSR. I've done some testing in the past with the RX 7600 MXT, and I really love the GPU. I've had amazing performance on many PCs with the uh, Radeon RX 7600 MXT connected over Oculink, so I figured we'd see some really great performance here. And uh, one thing I'd like to mention is both of these are prototypes. These are early units, the X1 and the 1X GPU. But so far, both of them have been working amazingly. Testing out one more here on the X1. We've got GTA 5 high settings, 1080p, again, over 100 FPS. And uh, you can see that GPU really isn't struggling right now. We're well under 120 watts. Getting up there around 33 on the TDP with this 135H Intel Core Ultra CPU. And uh, so far, I've been seeing some really great performance, especially in dock mode. Going up there around 35 watts in some cases really does up the CPU performance on this new chip. I wanted to move over to another device, and now we've got the new Menace Forum UM780 XTX. We've got Oculink support with this, and it's powered by the Ryzen 7 7840HS, which puts down some amazing performance. One of my favorite things about this is since we've got 100 watts out of this GPU, we can actually power this device over USB-C and plug in our Oculink cable.
So right now we're getting all of the power for the mini PC from the One X GPU. We don't need an extra wall adapter. It's actually going to send plenty over here to the UM780 XTX. And just to show you, we got everything working here. Ryzen 7 7840HS and the Radeon RX 7600MXT. I'm going to turn this boost button on. I always like to make sure I have this on so we can get the most out of it. And we're going to go ahead and launch. Let's do Cyberpunk 2077. Here we are. 1080p, ultra settings, no FSR. Personally, don't want to use any FSR if I don't need to. And if we want to go up to 1440p with this, we will need to enable some. I'd say FSR set to balanced ultra settings. We can see an average of around 74 FPS out of it. But right now, we're seeing an awesome frame rate at 1080p. More than enough for me, and it looks absolutely amazing. Right now, with the setup I have here, we're getting an average of 91 FPS. I've got one more to test. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, very high, 1080p, no FSR. So uh, we're maxed out here at 1080. Actually was thinking I'd see a bit more out of this game with the 7600 MXT, but usually I'm testing this at 1440p with FSR. Still over 60 and it is fully playable on this setup. Friendly neighborhood user just spotted a weapons deal going down. Okay, so when it comes to my first impressions of the One X GPU, love the form factor, and we've got some awesome features built in. Powerful Radeon RX 7600 MXT. We can use this over USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and of course, Oculink. Something that'll come in really handy if you're into these handhelds with Oculink or even mini PCs. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links to their official website in the description. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.